This conference will now be recorded. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Can you all see my screen now? Yep. Yes. Okay. All righty. So this is where we ended up last month. And um, if you can see me over to the side, for you, those of you who didn't see this, this is Carol's stitch out. Pretty cute. Okay, so we are on page 15 at part two, finish the zoo. So we are have all our critters in here, our tiger, our giraffe, and our mouse with his cheese. So we're going to add some more animals. We're going back up to our super designs up here on top. And we're going to go to the cute animals one, our first row, and the very last one, which is our elephant. And we are, come on, elephant, where are you? Oh, I have to click apply, don't I? <laughs> this is going to be good. Okay. We've got our elephant, but we want him facing the other way. So we want to come over to the left-hand side to this little triangle and click on it. And that will just flip him around to the other side. So he's looking the other way. And we want him down here in the lower left corner, but we don't want all of him. So when he's selected, we're gonna come up to our modify tab up at the top, and it gives us a message that it's going to fix our stitches so we want it, we want to say, okay. So now <clears throat> we're, the only thing we're seeing is the elephant. And we want to come down to the bottom to our zoom to rectangle tool and click on it and draw a rectangle around our elephant. That's huge. And you can still see the, as ghost stitches behind him the frame that was we built in the very beginning of this. If we come up here to point select, we can then cut out the parts of the elephant that we don't want to keep. So having the frame visible as ghost stitches is really helpful. So I'm going to just start clicking some points here and draw around the parts of the elephant that I don't want to keep. And I think I'll move that one a little bit up here. Okay. Once you have decided which parts of the elephant that you want to cut out and set those points to get rid of those. I'm gonna move that one down a little bit and that one down a little bit. And number 157 on page 16, right click twice. And so it now looks like we've got way more of the elephant selected, although we really haven't. It just made a rectangle around what we did um, select. And then we're going to come up here to the top bar in the ribbon bar in the clipboard section and click on delete. So we've gotten rid of the parts of the elephant that we don't want. And if if you got rid of too much or didn't get rid of enough of it, you can click on the undo arrow up here at the top and put the elephant back and then reselect and delete what you would like to go away. Otherwise, um, oh, we do have a stray stitch down here at the bottom that we really don't want. So if we come up to the ribbon bar, and click on select stitches, then come down to the very end of that stray stitch and just click and drag it up into the 
elephant's body. So it's hidden. And now we're gonna go to the home tab. And now we are, once we do that, we are back seeing everything. And on page 17, 162, we want to click on the elephant in the film strip if he's not already selected, and then come down to the bottom of your film strip on the, the very first icon on the left is called Stitch First. And if we click on that, that moves the elephant up to number one slot in the stitch out sequence. All right. And now we want to fix his eyes like we fixed everybody else's eyes. Um, they say click on the last pair of eyes. Um, I liked the ones which is number nine in my film strip, the one right here. I like that better. So pick a pair of eyes that you like better or like for your elephant and select those by clicking on them and then right click without moving your cursor and say duplicate. It puts them on the clipboard and it also, I'm going to, it, they were the ones that were in the tiger. They're selected up here in the, our tiger. And um, that's the ones I want to use. And they, when you duplicate it, it's always going to put them close to where the original was. So I want to move those over to the elephant, but they're so small that I want to, do a zoom to rectangle so I can get to them as well as the elephant and drag them down there. Okay, they're not quite the right size, but this was what I was talking about before that we want to make sure that we have blue handles on the eyes when we start to put them into a different animal or re, uh, change the size of them. I wanted to make mine a little bit bigger. Come on, come on eyes. And I want to rotate them because they're not quite at the right angle for the way the elephant's little head is. How did you, I'm sorry, I guess I don't have the eyes separate in my film strip. You don't? Oh, did I have to like ungroup or something? Well, the only thing that is grouped on mine is that frame. Nothing else is grouped. Do you have oh. some animals grouped on yours? I did. I ungrouped it. Thanks. I'm I'm with you now. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, you know, if you want to be more precise, you can use your zoom to rectangle and get your eyes where you want them and the size you want them to be. So I think I'll quit messing around right here. And that will be my elephant's eyes. The thing I did do was that um, when I got fin, I practiced last night. And when I got finished, I took all my eyes and I associated them with the animal they were connected to. So when the animal stitched out, then the eyes stitched out also. And it's up to you how you want to do that, okay? Everybody got their elephant with their eyes fixed? Not quite, but I'm getting there. Okay, well, we're not in a big hurry. Uh, all righty, I'm fine. Thanks. Okay, so now we're going to add 
a monkey and they tell us to zoom to fit, which I have already done. So we're gonna go back up to our super designs and we are going to scroll down and go into the cute animals too, where we found our mouse and lion last time. We're gonna go to the end of the row and number nine, we're gonna pick the monkey. And we're going to change his size to 41. It's at 46, we're gonna make him 41. So what, and then we are also going to change on top of page 18, number 173, the width, which is right under the 41. We're gonna change that to 75%. So he's gonna be on a diet. He's gonna get a little skinnier than this little round tummy that he has. So we now we're ready to click apply. So here's our monkey in the middle of the screen and we want to turn him upside down because he's hanging upside down with the rest of the animals being a monkey as usual. And we're gonna add some vines from him to hang from. And we may, may need to move him around a little bit when we get um, the vines in. So if you have your monkey in the square and up, hanging upside down, we are on uh, 177 on page 18. We're going to go back to our super designs and our, we're going to change the category over here on the left to Encore. When you click on that, then you get this row that has all these flowers and it has next to the last one is um, the gr two green leaves and that's the one we want. So click on it and we're gonna change the size. It says change the size to 21, but that's the size that is showing on my screen but we're going to change the width on it to 200 instead of 100. And then click apply. All right, so now we have a vine with two leaves and we can put it onto the top left corner of our frame and a, based on the picture that they have of it here, they've rotated it a little so that the second leaf is down a bit and the left leaf is more up. So put it on your left corner of your frame, however you would like it. And then Number 183, while the vine is selected, right click and select duplicate. So we get a second set of leaves. And it put it right on top. And we wanna move it so it connects with our first set of leaves. So we, you can line up the um, stems here that go from one set of leaves to the other one. All right, any questions? Everybody okay? All right, we're on page 19 now, moving along. While the second set of leaves, has, or the second vine, <clears throat> has the selection box on it, right click again and duplicate it. Takes it a sec. <laughs> okay. And we're going to rotate it. And have the stems overlap here on the frame. Then it says with the bottom sizing handle, which is 
one of our squares down here, the, one of the green squares, click on it and widen it a little to your preference, it says. Hmm. According to the picture, they've rotated it so that the leaves are pointing up rather than pointing down. And then if we widen it, <clears throat> okay, I don't want to cover up my giraffe. Okay, so manipulate your third set of piece of vine to be however wide and long you want it and where you want it along the right hand side of the frame okay and now on 188 it says let let's don't forget the monkey's eyes so we're going to click on the elephant's eyes and i'm going to go over to the <clears throat> film strip to click on them because i didn't know whether I'd get the elephant's eyes when I clicked on the elephant. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to right click and duplicate them. And then I'm going to, come on, where's my handle? I'm going to move them up to the monkey, use my zoom to rectangle tool to magnify it and rotate them around and manipulate them to be the size that I want them to be on my monkey. Where's the bottom of them? Okay. I'm never sure that they're gonna be right. <laughs> Where are your eyes, monkey? I think I need them a little narrower. Okay. All right. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe a little shorter on the white part. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back to zoom to fit so I can see everything. And now I am on 193 on page 19. We're going back to the super designs up at the in the ribbon bar. And we are going to change our category back to animals. And go to cute animals 2 and pick number three the toucan bird and we're going to change his size to 31 and click apply okay now we're like we did on the elephant on 197 we're going to click on the arrow or the triangle over on the left hand side so that our bird faces the other direction. And then while he's still selected, we're gonna move him to the, over here to the left side by this vine so he can sit on the vine and we're gonna rotate him a little so, and move him so his feet, which are kind of hard to see because they're black against that dark blue, are in line with that vine. So it looks like he's sitting on the vine. All right. Everybody have their bird where he should be. All right. So now we're going to modify our bird. And we're going to use our zoom to rectangle and enlarge him so we can work on him. All right. Now we are going to, oops. 
I'm in 200, I missed the step to go to modify. And again, every t we need to fix him as stitches. So we're gonna say, okay. And now we see him as stitches rather than a, in a 3D view. And in the draw stitches up here about the middle of the top of your page, and the, there's two slider bars. And we want to slide that to the right until we no longer see the bottom beak. So we're gonna make most of our bird disappear. Whoops. And it, when you get close, you can use the minus to put stitches back, like what I'm doing are the underlay stitches. Now, that last stitch that I put there, let me zoom that in a little bit more for you. This last stitch, I really don't want, so I'm going to use the plus sign to basically erase that or take it from view. Now we're going to use either the freehand select or the point select to select his beak. I'm going to shrink him just a little bit with my slider bar down here at the bottom so I can see all of his beak. Okay. And then I'm going to use point select to draw a box around the beak. And then right click twice so it is a selection box and then i'm going to come over to the ribbon bar up at the top left and i'm going to say cut and it's going to take it away but it put it on our clipboard down here at the bottom right hand corner and then i'm going to paste it back <clears throat> And on top of 21, number 206, it says rotate the beak up to the left and move it up along the yellow edge of the face. So I'm going to rotate it and then I'm going to move it up so that it looks like his beak is open. All right. All right, and now we, let's see. We ended up with a present of a, a long black stitch here. So we can get rid of that by going up here to the ribbon bar and clicking on select stitches, clicking on the end here for that stitch and drag it back up to the eye. So now that extra little stitch is gone. Okay. All right, now we want to work on the wings and I'm just gonna shrink my little bird down a little bit, not all that way. Okay, where's my little thing here? All right, now we wanna work on the wings and make some Instead of having just one color of wings, we're going to end up with four different colors. So we are going to zoom, do a zoom to rectangle just around basically the ring with wings. Mm. And then we are going to just check out how the wings stitch by using the slider bar. Um, <clears throat> so, suggests it tells us to use to just sit on the plus sign, and as you leave your cursor there and your mouse button down, you can see it how it the wings are drawn or stitched. <clears throat> 
okay or you could move the slider bar to the right to, to make it go faster so we see that the the wings are started over here on the right hand down here at the very bottom and go up and then across and then back down okay and there's a little note here that says just to let you know the full stitch editor is included in platinum level all the color commands are marked so it's very easy to pinpoint them like what they're talking about is the color change commands that show you where the beginning of a color or where a color change is <clears throat> but we don't have those here in um this part of the software so to, to make sure that we are seeing all of our stitches just click on draw all stitches and we want to come down here to the bottom of the right wing and i'm going to use my zoom to rectangle so i can see that a little better and we want still being in modify over in the top close to the right hand side there is a command called insert color man command we want to click on that and we want to click on the farthest or the point which is the very first stitch on this wing and in playing with it i found it it looks like a little uh, awkward star down here at the bottom and i found that this very point right down here was the first one so i clicked on that point and it popped up my thread color box and i want to pick the color orange which is right down here on the bottom row the third one from the right and say okay so now it has changed everything in that color block to the oh to the orange because that was the very first stitch in that color block all right now um in on number 128 judy Yes. Could you enlarge your screen? Uh, yes. Like that? Does yeah. That okay. Sure. So when I clicked on that first stitch, everything that was in that color block changed to the orange because that's what color I said I wanted it to be. Does that make sense? okay now we want to change the top two feathers on that same wing to a different color so we are going to go back up to our slider bar and make the bottom three feathers disappear okay and when we get close to the top second one we're going to slow down and make sure that we find the stitch that goes from that third one on the bottom to the second one on top so we can put another color change in right there okay now okay now you can see that there's only one stitch here and if i click on my plus sign on my slide draw slider well come on there we go okay so now i have the only the two top 
feathers here seeing and I wanted to see where this one went so I could find that. Okay, so it's right here that I want to put in my color change and I want to change those. I'm on page 24 and I want I clicked on that stitch, it brought my color box up, and I want to pick the blue color, the third one from on the top row, and say OK. So now I have orange feathers on the bottom and blue feathers on the top, and the feathers on the left side now are blue also because they're still within that same color block as those two that I just changed to blue. Okay, any questions with that one? Okay, I want to scooch this down a little bit. Come on. Okay. Okay, so now we want to go over to the other side and let's see. Oh, stop. I don't want you. Thank you. There's a line of blue stitching that goes across the bird's body from the top of the wing on the right to the top of the wing on the left. And okay, I'm going to move. Okay, there we go. On number two, 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 222 on page 24, it says deselect color three. That means come over to your design panel here on the right and take the click on the check mark on number three. So that part of the bird is hidden. All right. That'll help us see where our, we need to put our color change. So we're back to our um, slider bar up here. And we want to move it along until we are, whoopsie, until we have gotten rid of not everything like that. It was terrible. Sorry. Okay. I'm not good at this slider bar thing. Okay. All right. All right. So there are the the stitches going into the wing. And if I advance until I only see this one, this is where I want to put my next color change, right here. So we're going to click on that, and we are going to pick pink, this bright pink right here, the third row, the third square, and say OK. So now that whole wing is pink. And it has added another color in. So now our the bird's body is color number four. And on item 226, it says deselect number four. Take the check mark out of the color list over here in the design panel. So the body's disappears again and then we want to on 227 it says use the upper slider bar and the plus sign to locate the stitch for the next feather well they're talking about the top two feathers so we're going to where are we come on We are moving slow. 
There we go. Whoopsie. To remove all your stitches until you just see the ones for those top two feathers. Okay, so this is our point where we want to put in one more color change command. That's number 228. Click on there, get your color box up, and pick this bright yellow down in the bottom right-hand corner of our colors. All right, and then... We're going to right click to turn off our insert color command, number 231 on page 25. All right, and now we're going to the home tab and go back to regular size using the zoom to fit tool down at the bottom. And there you can see our bird. Now, one more set of eyes to fix, number 234 on page 25. You want to select the monkey's eyes, either in the film strip or in the, on the monkey. Right click so you got your command list and select duplicate. And then zoom to fit so you can see the monkey's eyes that are duplicated and the bird and move the eyes that wasn't what i wanted to move oh, whoops come here there we go i'm going to unselect them for a second there we go well that was crazy let me undo that because I, when I went to move them the first time, I grabbed the rotation center and that wasn't good because I moved that and then I, when I take them up to the bird, I won't be able to, <laughs> to rotate them like I want because the rotation center is off. Come on. Okay. So I'm going to select them again, right click, duplicate them, and then when I move them, be careful where I put my move cursor so that I make sure I have that center rotation in there where I want it. And once I get them up to the bird, then I can manipulate them, use my zoom to rectangle to see where I am and what I'm doing. I want them a little skinnier, but a little shorter. Come on, don't be that way. And you can make them as tall or as, as short of as you want. To all right, I think they're pretty good where they are. Maybe I can move them. Maybe no. If I rotate them, they're not lined up right. So I'm just gonna move them down just a tad. Okay. So now I'm happy with my bird and I can zoom to fit again so I can see everything. All right, page 26. We now have a zoo. And now we can put our letters in. So if we go up to the top on the ribbon bar and click on the letter word to bring up that function in the to pick the font we want to go to the retro category and pick the metro font 
which is this purple one down here at the bottom. And mine's already selected because I was playing with this last night. And in the letters box here, this empty box, we want to type in the word zoo. Now, it doesn't matter whether you type it in as all caps or all lowercase or what, because as it says underneath the font here, this is only an uppercase font. That's what the UC means. And we're going to leave it the 12 millimeter size and just go over to the right and click on apply. And it puts it in the middle of our zoo here and we need to move it up to the top between our bird and our tiger. Also on Number 246, we want to double left click on over here in our color select box. We want to double left click on the purple color so we get our color change box. And we want to pick this bright green, the second row, the second one from the right, and click okay so now it changes our purple letters to green then come back up to your letters box delete the word zoo and type the word cadet c-a-d-e-t and click apply and we're going to take that down and put it at the bottom. You can use the green circle in the center to line it up with the center of your design. And then over here on the 246 and 247, repeat. Oh, to if you want to change the color of it, to something besides purple, then come back up to your purple in the color select box, double left, left click, and change the color to whatever you would like it to be. Um, they suggest changing it to green again. All right. Now, down here at the, I'm going to zoom in on this, on the word cadet, with it selected, you have this little yellow box up here at the left-hand upper corner. If you click on that box, then you get all sorts of cool options to manipulate the letters or the word. So we are going to come down almost to the bottom and click on the Constrain Perspective command. And then you're going to bring your cursor over here to the right hand corner on the bottom and move down and out to change the shape of our word, which is pretty cool. All right, and once you've got it, like you want it you can move it up a little if you want to make it a little bit bigger you could stretch it out till it was almost to the bottom of the hoop and then you can left click outside of the word to deselect it go back to zoom to fit and come up to the very top and click on our rainbow circle up there for life view and it will show you what it's going to look like when you stitch it out you can zoom in on it this little slider will it's come in at 86 percent on mine you can zoom in so you can see details if you want to move around 
as you're zoomed in, you can use this arrow here and just slide around the box to, to see the various parts of your design. And if you want to watch it stitch out, then you can cancel here and use the little arrow box next to our life view, the design player. Open that up and click on the arrow and fast forward it a bit. And you can see what order your design is going to stitch out in. If that's and notice that it has taken out underneath like the leaves and so forth. It took out all the stitches underneath there so it doesn't pile up a bunch of stitches and make it really bulletproof where we've got part of one design overlapping another design. Like up here, the bird's tail, the leaf is gone underneath it. The parts of the frame are gone over here on the right-hand side. So. Can this be set to embroider all the same color? Um, if you're talking color sort, right? Yeah, because you've got the, so many eyes, black and white. Right. Um, it will, it will, it's an intelligent color sort because it will not um, put all of the black together or all of the white together. It will only put them together so that the design looks right when you're finished if that makes sense. Okay. I mean, you still may have six or 10 black color changes, but that's so it doesn't mess up the integrity of the design. Okay, and that when you export it, um, you can do those options. And I think I forgot to tell you to, um, Let's see. Was there a place on the the? Hmm. Thinking. No, oh, I got to go back further. No, zoom to fit. Okay, I was thinking that um, they had us move the bird up, but he needs to be after the. the the vines so he's on top of them but i you know for my personal thing i want to move the monkey's eyes up next to the monkey and i, I want to move the bird the bird needs to be above no it doesn't he needs to be after the vines so i have mine above the vines because his feet supposedly are on a vine it's right, not. but then your your ta his tail is going to be on the other side of the vine too, and Correct. it's a personal choice, Brenda. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, again, like Carol did, she used she put her own wording in there. Uh, she probably had to go to a bigger hoop to put her words in there uh, but you know you can do whatever you want you can do it without the words or you could put somebody's name in there you could you know you could have put different animals in there or whatever but this was just i i think it was a pretty neat exercise to show you um all the different things you can do <coughs> to put things together to um, rearrange them to take parts of designs away that you don't want 
um, it was just kind of a fun design and it made a really, really cool little design when you got finished, although it has um, rather, mine says 37,172 stitches. I don't, you know, I'm curious to know what maybe some of yours say. Where do you find the stitch out? Okay, up here in design panel, you need to select all, do a control A, which will select all. And then over here on the top, on the right hand side on the design panel where the colors are right above there, under information, it will say how many stitches there are, how many colors changes there are, which mine is at 81. <laughs> and it will give you the size. And if you put your cursor over the size, it will give it to you in inches rather than millimeters, which I think is <laughs> a really nice feature because sometimes my brain doesn't I have to get out my little ruler that has inches and millimeters on it to know what size it is. Did you find it, Brenda? Yeah, I did. Okay. Anybody else, any questions? Laura, you're, you got your zoo all together? I'm a little behind, but I'm there and I, I watched what you were doing and took notes. So, but yes, I'm just a little bit slower. That's all right. Is there, do you have any questions that we can go back on? No, I think I learned a lot. It was just finding all the little buttons as I was going. So, okay. Well, you know, if you're ever stuck, you should say, excuse me, wait a minute, you know, because, <laughs> you know, we'll always be glad to do that. Okay to help you out in any way you can because once you get behind and lost then you're frustrated and that's not good yeah i didn't get frustrated i just watched what you were doing once i got behind so okay. thank you all right well i don't don't want you frustrated that's <laughs> not a good feeling nope not frustrated okay sandy did any, this help any uh, yeah, I'm going to do it again and make my eyes with the white. And I did take out the Zoo Cadet, and then I put in All My Friends Are Wild. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I have two of them now. We'll see how that works out. All right. Okay. I think that's a clever saying that she put in there. It was cute, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mary, you good? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I... You were saying I've got um, just shy of 37,000 stitches. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, it it was a great exercise. Wasn't it? It was wonderful. I don't know who, there was no author's name on it. And I'm, I was curious to know, and I don't know who did this. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whoever did, hire them. <laughs> this well, was uh, this was very <laughs> this, this was a challenge I think this was really a challenge but it, I, it was very yeah. clever yeah learning a lot though yeah about changing things mm -hmm. I mean just who would have thought that you took a lion and made yeah. a tiger out of him oh yeah hmm. and changing the beak on that toucan and the wings that was really that was good. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the kind of thing that I really like about the software is that you can, um, you have the ability to get in there and, and change all sorts of stuff around, take things apart and put them back together. And I mean, if, if necessary, you can even get in there and stitch editor and add individual stitches in to, you know, much like we did Tuesday when we were doing Stitch Creator with, uh, on oh. the, the FAF, you can do the same kind of thing in um, the software. 
with designs instead of stitches. Yeah, you just have to remember, you know, when you're looking for something, that you just have to get close and then modify it. Yeah. Uh, I keep losing everything today. I don't know what's going on. Here, I've got everybody back now. Okay, <laughs> did we go away? <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah, and so did my my software or the, at least I had saved it and then all of a sudden my zoo disappeared and I had something else. I don't know. I guess I'm click happy. <laughs> the wonderful world of electronics. Yep. Oh, Carol Foss, are you okay? No, I'm doing okay. I didn't finish it all, but um, I listened and took notes and it was really good. Really, really good. So I appreciate it. Is there anything that I can help you with? No, it's nothing specific. I think it really, um, I just need to take, I, I work a little slower. That's all. <laughs> that's okay. I think it, you know, you, I have a tendency to go probably a little bit faster because I've been doing this for a couple of years and uh, I don't want to, you know, like I told Laura, tell us to slow down, tell us to, to stop and wait a minute. If you're having a problem, be more than happy to do that. Uh, I appreciate that. I was doing okay, but I just, I, I don't want to keep everybody behind. So it all made sense to me. So that's, that's, oh, that's, a, that's a great thing. Okay. Yeah. Lee Ward, are you okay with it? Your mic's not on, hon, or did something happen to your computer? We don't know what's wrong. Um, <laughs> Did it go? <laughs> We've been having trouble for about two weeks, so I don't know what's wrong. With oh, it. I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, if I can help you, contact me, okay? Okay. All right, Liz, you, you got a zoo? Yes, I got him all done. I got 38,000 stitches. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, you know, it, it depends on how much of, you know, maybe you kept, you know, the ones with more stitches maybe kept more yeah. of, the, of the animals than I did. Or um, again, going back to that one about um, making sure that if when you're messing with the eyes or you know, like when we were doing the tiger and, and changing the size of the head and stuff that you are in resize rather than scale, which means that you know, the handles on your selected thing is are blue rather than white. Yeah. Well, that just so adds it, more stitches. Yeah, it, so it recalculates the stitches if you make it especially if you make it smaller, so it takes out some of those stitches. Okay, Meg? Yeah. You got, you got a zoo? Yeah, I do. I have a lot of stitches too. Do you? 37,000. Well, mine is 37. 37, yeah, mine, 172. Mine's 37, 851. Oh, that's a couple more. <laughs> yeah, just a few. But um, I think it's really cute. I'm so used to seeing it on the screen that I see it fairly large. And then when you see it stitched out, it's not <laughs> it's not yeah. that large. <laughs> well, it's cute. It's adorable. You forget what size hoop you're in, you know, 150 yeah. by 150 isn't big. No, it's just six inches. Yeah. 
but I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at it on a big screen and it's in lower, it's at a, right now it's at 115%. So right. if I change that to 100%, then it shrinks it down a little. I know, but it still fills up your whole software screen. So unless you're mentally thinking about what hoop you're in. Yeah. Yeah. So, anything else? Any questions? Any comments? No. Nope. Well, I thank you all for being here. Well, thank you for teaching. Thank you. It's my yeah, pleasure. Thanks, I, I have fun. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Good. Okay. Okay. Bye, bye Judy. Bye, Mary. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Judy. Thanks, Thanks Judy. Judy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, ladies, Judy. for all being here. I appreciate it. And I don't know how to get out of here. <laughs> Okay, how do I stop sharing options? Make presenter. Uh, there we go. Cancel. All right. Okay, well, I guess.